So as you can see behind me, I have a really big situation. In fact, Ringling Brothers called and they want their tent back. So I have a big quilt, no long arm. The Baby Lock Altair and I are going to tackle this situation. I'm Kathy and this is Sewing Tech Talk. We have a giveaway for today's video. It's a great pack of thread, and yes, you can use this for machine quilting. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win, so good luck. So, do you have a big situation like I do? It was fun to piece, and I just kept going, and it's huge. So I have to quilt it, and I don't have a long arm to do it on. So the baby lock Altair and I are going to tackle that big quilt. I thought you'd like to see some of the situations and strategies that I use to kind of bring a big quilt like that and tame it for use with a, with a regular machine. So I have a handout. There's a lot of information and there's a lot of different things that you can check off. So in the handout, I talk about all the different things that you can do to help fit that big quilt into even a huge machine like the Baby Lock Altair. So let's talk about some of those items and remember talk about them in your handout as well. So first and foremost you need an area to fit uh, and to support the quilt. The biggest enemy when we're doing a very large quilt on a machine that's not a long arm is the weight of it, the bulk of it, and gravity is absolutely our enemy. So let's see if we can um, mitigate some of those situations. So this machine has a lot of different features that help me do that. We're going to talk about that when we turn the machine around so that you can see it. But here is my setup. What I have is I have the machine on a table, I have it in a nice big airy room, and I have a side table to support the bulk of the quilt. Now if you can possibly do it, a quilt like this is going to take you some time. So see if you can scope out an area in where you live that you can set up your machine and maybe leave it a set up with this kind of a setup for maybe about a week. You can't go full on and get this quilt done in a day unless you're Superwoman and I'm not or Superman, but you'll need to be able to come back to it. So if you can set up an area where you can come back to it, that's great. Speaking of that area, you'll need some, some uh, tables if you have one of those great sewing studios where the machine can fit down inside of the sewing studio and an extension table, that's ideal. If not, you're going to need some maybe fold away tables, maybe your dining room table will work for that. You're going to need an extension table on your machine because you're going to be able to have to keep all hands on deck. For this machine, I love the digital dual feed. It's a great feature. We're going to talk about that in detail in a little bit. I don't use the regular sewing foot. I do use my digital dual feed for all my straight sewing. And if you're pretty familiar with free motion quilting, it's really going to help because you don't have to turn the quilt. So this is the single needle hole plate and regular free motion foot, one of three that comes with the Altair. For doing straight lines and without the feed dogs, a ruler foot and a ruler is going to help you do that. We'll do a big video on that a little bit later on. So look for that different video because that's such a big subject. And you're going to want to set up the machine for success with the thread. You don't want to have to change your thread or if they have issues with the thread. So find a thread that works, that's going to work well for you. And I use a matching top and bottom thread because sometimes when you get stressed out when you're, when you're quilting, it can lead to some tension issues. So I use a matching color top and bottom. So if I have some teeny tiny tension issues, <laughs> it's not going to mess me up. I'm going to show you how I split the batting a little bit later on to lighten up the quilt. So I use a wash away pin or a uh, like a masking tape to help me mark that so I can get it back together. You're going to have to have that quilt layered. So I like to use a, a spray adhesive that's temporary. This one's good for the environment. It's a sulky and it I can use it indoors or you can use safety pins. And to join those layers back together, I use a fusible no-show mesh. So, oh, 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 and when I set up my machine, this is optional for the Baby Lock Altair, but it's a multifunction foot control. And you can keep all hand decks, hands on deck when you use this to either uh, cut the thread or lift the presser foot. 
And another thing that I really like is on the Baby Lock Altair, it comes with a two spool thread stand. So if I'm using a large cone of quilting thread, it works. Now, something you want to think about is the weight of the quilt. Everything we do, we're going to try to get rid of some of that weight. Because I did a practice quilt, uh, not a practice quilt, another quilt so I can show you some things. And I put this quilt together. It's not huge. It's not even a twin size. And I weighed it. It weighs three pounds. So this is a three pound weight. Now, how many times can you do this over the course of quilting? It seems like not much, but it's going to weigh down on you. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to lighten up the quilt as much as possible. In a little bit, I'm going to show you how I take away some of that batting on a super large quilt to get the weight and the bulk down. But when you're shopping for batting, there's a lot of options that you have. When you shop for it, this is the king size that's going to go in that Gigantor quilt that's behind me. And so when you shop for batting, lift it up and compare. The same size is one lighter than the other, but there's something else to think about. On this batting, this batting needs to be quilted four inches apart at the very minimum. There are some battings out there that only need to be quilted every 10 inches. Think about that. I have to quilt so much more on a batting like this than I do on a batting like that. And that's more time under the needle. So there's lots of different considerations. Like I said, go to your handout and they're all written down there. Talk about lighting. You want to have nice lighting. You want a comfortable chair. There's a whole bunch of information in there. So now let's talk about how we're, I'm going to take this quilt and I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to cut down the bulk and maybe some of the weight. Now, this quilt, I could probably get it under there because the Altair is a pretty big machine and I can fit a lot under the harp. That's the area that to the right of the needle. There's 11 and a quarter inches to the right. Because this machine also has a high harp, I can fit a heck of a lot of quilt in there. But <laughs> this quilt, it's huge. So I couldn't figure out a way to show you because it's such a big scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about going small. So I'm going to move some of this away and I'm going to show you my setup. So I have a smaller machine that I want to show you how to set everything up. So there's my machine. Now what we're going to want to do is set a table just to the right so it supports the weight of my quilt. So there's my quilt and it's going to be supported when I'm sewing on there. But you might be able to see that this is pretty big and it's not going to fit very well under that harp of the machine. So how do we cut it down? Well this is what I do. I take the quilt and I layer it two-thirds of it. And I'm going to take away one third of the batting. So how do I do that? Let me find my scissors right here. So I take my scissors and I layer my quilt. I pull the top back and I'm going to cut this batting in a wavy line. I don't do the straight line because the eye can see a straight line. So when I put this back together, it makes it so that you're not going to see the join as much if there's any errors in getting it back to where I need it to be. So I'm going to take my scissors. Now remember, this is a big quilt. And I'm going to take my batting and I'm going to cut away one third. Being super careful not to cut the backing. So let's cut our one third away in a kind of a wavy line. Now, I want that to stay down there. I had to lift it up because it was so small. Now, I have one third. I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to make some marks. Use a wash away marker. And I'm going to make some marks so that I can put this back together again. Does that make sense so far? So now I have some marks that I can put it back together again. And I'm going to gently, super gently, roll this up and put it someplace safe. 
in a bag, someplace where it won't be thrown away, ask me how I know. So now I have my quilt and I have a third of the batting taken away, put away someplace safe. Now what I can do is I can take this quilt and I can quilt the middle of it with this smaller area, just the top and the backing, quilt this area when I finish it, turn it around, quilt this area when I'm done with that, I put this back on and I go ahead and that'll fit into the into the into the machine really well. So just by taking away a third, you can really you can really split it up and you can conquer the whole quilt. So I'm gonna put this back together with some uh, fusible fleece. No, with some fusible no-show mesh and a small iron. I'm going to get this quilt ready. I'm going to do that and we'll turn this machine around. And I would love to show you how the Baby Lock Altair has some awesome features that you need to look for when you're setting yourself up to get a big machine, a big quilt conquered with a pretty big machine that's not a long arm. So let me get set up and I'll be right back. So this is how I join them back together. I do use the fusible no-show mesh because it's very soft and it really doesn't change the hand of the quilt. So when that when that line is cut, uh, I like I said, I cut a wavy line. And when I join it back together, I, I have made some marks. And I want it to just join but not overlap because that would show. And if there's happen to me any gaps because it's a wavy line then it's not going to show as much as a straight line. So all I do is I take my no-show mesh and I cut a significant strip. It's really an expensive way to put this quilt back together. On a larger batting I might do a little bit wider one but usually this two or three inches works really well. And then I take a small portable iron because it's easy for me to handle instead of a heavy iron. And I really just fuse it down over that, over that, um, uh, the cut. So now the two sides are put back together and I can feel there is no lump there to show when I finish quilting it. Now I do this on my large table because this could be pretty big. What I do is I get a pressable surface. This is the cutting board from my kitchen. You can get a pressing mat that's really, really nice to put underneath there. But I just want to put this right back together just like this. And then what I'm going to do, let me get this out of the way, is this quilt is going to now layer back up and I am going to put it back together. I'm going to put my pins on there or my spray based. Now if you use the spray based, spray the fabric and not the batting because this is like that English muffin with nooks and crannies and you'll use a ton of spray. But if I spray it here, what it's going to do, it's going to lay down, stay nice and flat and I'm going to finish up that. Now I wanted to show you real briefly with the machine as a reference exactly what I'm talking about. So here's my demo quilt and the one part has been taken away. So what can happen is this part here can go under the machine with this rolled up because it's going to be pretty big. When I finish the middle, I'm going to turn it around and do this side up to the middle. And then this is going to come back on just like this. I turn it around and I finish this side. This way the bulk of the quilt is to the left where I have my table to support. And I have my nice big table. Actually everything's been turned around so that you can see it. I do like the setup where I put everything into the corner so the quilt can't fall off the edge of the world. So here we go. We're all set up. I have my quilt back together. I would love to show you some features on the Baby Lock Altair that you could look for in a large machine. Now we're going to be talking about the Altair, but I want to insert something. We're doing this on a, on a really big machine. That's the Baby Lock Altair. Now, if you haven't looked at long arms recently, a long arm is a great way to do a big quilt. And if you had looked at long arms five or six years ago, things have changed a lot. They have now become a ton more affordable and a ton more space saving even to do a larger quilt. So if you looked at them and you haven't looked at them lately, give the store a call and find out if there's any options that might work for you. Also, the Baby Lock Altair is an embroidery and sewing machine and it does a great job on both. But you can get this machine, another version of it, that's sewing only. 
And if that's an option for you, you may want to think about that. You can get the Altair without embroidery. Now, I love embroidery, so I don't think I can do without it, but maybe you can. So let me get this quilt orientated. I want to for sure put this iron away, and then we'll look at some of the features on the Altair. I'll be right back. So I have everything set up the way I kind of like it. And this is the way it's going to stay in my sewing room for a while. So um, let's talk about what are the things that are on the Altair that are awesome for doing this type of a quilt. So you can see I have a whole bunch over here to the right of the needle. And it's, it's pretty spacious over there. Now there's some things on the machine though that make it uh, much easier. And there's features that I absolutely use. Uh, because I like to keep control of this quilt with all my hands right on the quilt. So the uh, multifunction foot control is something that I really like. It is an option for the Baby Lock Altair, and it has this little side pedal, and then you have a heel tap on it as well. So if I were to go into the settings of the machine, I can come over and I can, I can adjust whatever these are, and I can have this on either side. That's why I didn't attach it. You can attach it. I like to keep mine in the back because I'm weird, but I can have this a heel tap, do pressure foot up and down, nothing, thread cutting, needle position up and down. I use that a lot, and I generally set this auxiliary pedal up for a uh, cut. So you can set it up any way that you want, and it works really, really well. So I'm going to put that foot control down there. So now, uh, I have my screen, and I have, I'm going to be using my uh, straight stitch. And I can easily just pick that just with the touch of a button, of course. Now, uh, it's a big screen. And what can happen is the quilt can push up against the screen and change your settings. So on this machine, I have what's called a lock. When I touch that, if the quilt hits the, the screen, it's not going to change it. So I really like that feature as well. I have something called pivot. And what that does is when I touch this, when I lift my foot off the presser foot, the needle stays down, but the foot comes up. That's great for twisting and turning the quilt because I'm going to need to do that. And I'm not going to want to have to, you know, move anything or use my presser foot lever in the back uh, or even my button on the machine. I want to keep all hands on the quilt. Also, on this machine, I have what's called an automatic foot lower. So when I come into the settings, I can tell the machine that I want the machine to, when I start to sew, when I literally put my foot on the power pedal, if the foot is up, it's automatically going to lower it down. And when I take my foot off, it's automatically going to raise it off. And you can use that in conjunction with the pivot feature to totally set up the machine for the way that you like it. I like that. And while I'm here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the digital dual feed. Now I have it on the machine already, and I use the digital dual feed when I'm doing any kind of straight quilting on a large quilt, especially like this. Because why? Because it has a band underneath, and it's a big accessory, if it will, because it literally has a motor in there, and it pulls the quilt through uh, as opposed to a walking foot, which just lifts up the, the presser foot so the machine can pull it through with the feed dogs. This literally lets the machine have a feed dog, as it were, on the bottom and a band on the top. Now, how it works that's really well is I can totally adjust the dual feed adjustment. So for example, if I'm coming up to something and I have, I've layered my quilt pretty well, but I'm getting kind of a puffy part on the top. If I want to ease that in, I tell the dual feed to increase a little bit more on the top than just standard pulling the quilt through. So I can literally use this to feed and ease in my quilt on the top and the bottom. If I didn't layer it 100% well or things are going a little strange, I don't know if you've had that situation. Sometimes you're coming to crossed threads where you're like doing a grid and it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to go. It wants to put a tuck in the top. So I can totally adjust my dual feed for that. So the dual feeds on, when I put it on the machine, it knows what stitches that I can use. It's awesome because I can use a whole bunch of my stitches and I'm just not going to sew sideways, which this machine can also do.
So when I put my digital dual feet on, it's grayed out the stitches that I cannot use with this machine. Sometimes when I quilt, I like to come in here and do the serpentine stitch when I'm going over, the, over a seam and it does it really, really well with that digital dual feed. I could even do some pretty wacky stitches and when I'm quilting and the digital dual feed's gonna handle it. But on this quilt, I'm going to stay with my straight stitch. Now another thing that I really like on this machine, and I can especially use it with my digital dual feed, is I have a basting stitch. So if I want to put my layers of quilt together and I want to eliminate some weight by taking out my safety pins, they surprisingly weigh quite a bit, I can come in and I can use the basting feature on my machine. And what it does, it does a stitch, a big space, and another stitch, and it literally can base that quilt together and it comes out later. How is the best way to take it out? Well, quite honestly, I use wash away thread. So if I'm basting my quilt together and I'm taking out my safety pins, I use that basting feature, wash away thread, stitch right over the top of it because it's gonna come out later just with a spray of water. Another feature I really like is on this machine, I have what's called a left-right shift. Now, when I change the width of the position of my needle, I can change it in half millimeter increments. And that's pretty small, but what if I just want to go a fraction to the other side, maybe a thread? So with my left-right shift and I use it, it's going to go a quarter of a millimeter. <laughs> that is a thread. That's a hair on your head. So if I'm doing a stitch in the ditch with my digital dual feed like I'm getting ready to do, I use the sole for the digital dual feed, that stitch in the ditch. I, I shift the needle just a hair to the right and I get perfectly in that ditch. I'm going to do this quilt and I'm going to do straight lines coming on down and I think that's gonna set everything in. I'm gonna take my pins out as I go, and I might be ready to get everything done. So let's see what that looks like when I do the digital dual feed and I do the stitch in the ditch. So I have matching thread top and bottom. I've moved my needle over just a hair, and I'm going to use the sole for the digital dual feet. It's an option, but I really like it to get some straight line quilting done. Let me find my foot control and let's actually sew. Now, did you hear how quiet the machine was? You're going to appreciate that over a week of sewing and I am right in that ditch. So I have a lot more in the ditch to go. I think I'm going to get busy with my practice warm-up quilt before I tackled the great monster behind me. Remember the Baby Lock Altair? Awesome machine. You don't want the embroidery parts? Call the store. Maybe there's an option where you just get the one with the quilting, but I think you're going to want the embroidery too. So I'm going to shoot it over to George. A lot of information. Check your handout. Don't be afraid to do the big stuff because... You can handle it with a machine like this. Thank you so much for watching. I have to get busy. I have a lot of work to do. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. Don't forget, you can click on a, the link and download Kathy's lesson guide on today's presentation. But I want to take a couple moments to share with you my favorite features on the Baby Lock Altair. I believe the Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine on the market. There are machines that sell for thousands of dollars more that do not offer the same features. You know, the embroidery features are incredible. The nine and a half inch by 14 inch embroidery area, you can really uh, expand your horizon with embroidery and there's 494 built-in designs. You also have that 10.1 inch color screen that gives you all kinds of editing capability from color to sizing to also you can actually take designs and do automatic stippling around it. It has 30 built-in fonts and five jumbo monograms. Now with the fonts, you have all kinds of editing capability. You can even take and put in a, a name or a saying and then do an applique border and turn it into applique automatically. It also has the IQ Designer. Now, this is an app that you use your smart device like a phone uh, or an iPad, and you can send an image, a graphic image to the machine, and it will turn it into embroidery 
instantly. The embroidery is amazing, but what about the sewing and quilting? This machine has 11.25 inches of space and five inches of height, so you can fit even the largest quilts into this machine. It also has automatic fabric sensors that will sense the thickness of the fabric so it will set the right pressure and with the automatic tension it gives you perfect fabric control from heavy denim to very sheer fabric to working with elastic or even a t-shirt collar this machine truly controls the fabric with perfection but also it has the digital dual feed and that what that does is that is a belt driven uh, uh, walking foot system that's controlled by the motor of the machine and you can control even like here with this minky perfectly so you have so many amazing features with this machine but what about an amazing deal but wait that's not all for a limited time and while we have it in stock we are offering a special bonus with your Altair purchase. So first, we're gonna give this beautiful set of 63 spools of polyester embroidery thread. This, the beautiful shine and quality of this thread is quite amazing. Also, I'm including uh, the Babylock Ultimate Stabilizer Bundle. This has the, uh, the most popular rolls of stabilizer from wash away to cut away in different colors, and this will enhance your embroidery to give you a better quality. I'm also including the Baby Lock Altair Inspirational Guide. Now, the instructions on this machine is wonderful, but what's different about the Inspirational Guide, it is written by Baby Lock educators. Assuming you know nothing about the machine, so it takes you through every aspect, giving you a uh, full color, it's, it's over 300 pages of full color description, step-by-step -step description. And if you complete this uh, inspirational guide, you truly know everything on this machine. We're including that. Plus, we're gonna include a online membership to Baby Lock's Love of Knowledge. This has hundreds of videos that give you step-by-step -step details on how to use the machine and also do techniques. This is invaluable and you get a membership to this as well. You also get our famous rose gold scissors. Um, this, these scissors are wonderful, both the shears and the embroidery shears. But last and not least, we put together a very exclusive design bundle by Anita Good Design. It has 17 different collections and it comes with over uh, 400 design files and it's truly amazing the variety you get with this so all this which equals over a sixteen hundred dollar value is free with your altair purchase for a limited time now we will run out of these supplies so this is while supplies last so click on the link to order or you can call us at 1-800-865-9664 you can email me at more so at AOL.com. But don't wait. This deal will surely end. But if you have any questions, again, call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.